Hi everyone, we're going to start from scratch and make go from downloading sequences in NCBI to uploading them into R and getting them and making a phylogeny. Okay, so BLAST or NCBI, I think maybe this is the easiest way to go in. Stay in the all databases and then somebody's doing white nose syndrome. Oh, maybe that's one word. So let's use that as an example. Syndrome in bats. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, this kind of tells you everything that is published in PubMed that has is on any form of blast search that is available. So a really easy thing to do for those of you who want to do the mostly R stuff is to go to population set. So one thing you should know is this pseudo Gymenocus destructans, that is white nose syndrome. Now there's a bunch of other species of this. Um, I think this is the one. Um, there's a bunch of other species of this also that are, um, we're not quite sure yet if they are as dangerous. So let's see. It's kind of hoping to find. Oh, that's fine. Um, there's also a few other, like, I'm pretty sure this is a bat genus. This is more fungal species from ecological samples. Um, this is, I saw my Otis in there, that was a bat species. This is another fungus as well. Okay, so I'm going to pick this one with 11 sequences. 11 is pretty close to 15. Um, also, I've already done this ahead of time to make sure it worked. So that's the one I'm going to pick. So I'm going to click in here and then tell it I want FASTA files. And here they are. It also very, very conveniently tells us what um, the publication for this is so we can find that publication and actually let me just go ahead and show you how to do that well you could probably click on it from there full text here Let's see if this works Ta -da! that worked great so then i have that paper i have other papers that are citing these papers i have links to the nucleotide sequence the population set the proteins all of those things. So that is a fabulous way to go. And maybe the th way that saves you the most time. But let's make our FASTA file. So all I've done is copied this. And then I'm going to go into muscle. And paste it. I'm going to do my output as Pearson FASTA, Pearson FASTA is my output. That's going to be imp come important later, so make sure you pay attention to what you're outputting. I'm not saying there's only one right way to do this. I'm just saying like if you output in a different way and you tell it you did it in FASTA, then it's not going to work. Okay, and then I submit it. And that was pretty fast. And here we are. This doesn't look aligned. Uh oh. Let's go back one. I think all we did was make it a FASTA file. Let's let's align it first. There we go. Okay, and we waited a long time for that to happen, and here, through the magic of television, here it is. So now I have these sequences. They are aligned using a cluster alignment, 
if I press download an alignment file, it looks like this, and I can copy that out. Um, one thing to note is I think we really do want FASTA. So I would go back to your FASTA file. Because this data is so well trimmed, it looked it looks like it aligns instantly, right? There's not a lot of gaps in things. If you build your own data set, which is perfectly fine by downloading each sequence, so this is like one individual's sequence. This is another individual's sequence. These are all for the same gene. That's really important. This is a TEF1 alpha gene. Um, then they're going to be different lengths. And see, like, this one is missing one, so it put a gap there. Um, but don't be afraid of having dashes. So we're going to download this as our alignment file. When you press download, unfortunately, all it does is um, make it in this new window. So then you have to copy it. I'm just right-clicking, pressing copy, going into my notepad. Just typically open and pasting it into there. Okay, so now I have my FASTA file. I'm going to say save as FASTA white note underscore white nose. So here's the thing that you should know. You don't want get you don't want any special characters or spaces in your text in your file names because that is not going to work. We're also going to call it dot fasta um, and try to take off this extension. It's not going to work. It's still going to put the dot text on there, so that's okay though. Um, this way we just know what kind of file it is. So this is how I'm going to save it. I when I'm running R, this is not the most uh, organized way, but you guys already know I'm not the most organized person. When I'm running R, I um, just save it onto my desktop. So desktop, save. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. So then I'm going to open our studio. And here it is. Something weird going on. There we go. So our studio is open. Here it is. This is actually, nope. Yeah. This is actually the, your instructions for how to do this next assignment. So I have um, gone ahead and made you an R log. So that's what you're going to use to follow your instructions. Here's the thing though. You're going to have to name, rename your file. So my file is called whitenose.fasta.txt. But if you're using, I don't know, uh, parakeets, this might be called parakeets.fasta.txt. It's completely up to you if you just want to name it how I name it so you don't have to change everything or if you want to change everything. You, either way is fine. I have the hiccups. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, and it says this up here, first you will set your working directory. Sessions. Set working directory. Choose directory. Desktop. I didn't go in any folder. I'm just picking desktop. See, it says it down there. It worked. And I can know it worked because if I click over here, I can find my folder or my thing. Is there an alphabetical order? Do, 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 do. White nose dot fasta dot text. So we're in great shape. Okay, you're gonna need some packages. If I put them as install commands here, just in case you guys haven't installed them. Um, at this point, I think you should have all three of these. But so this is ape. I have it. It's right here. You can see it. This is my favorite Fangorn because it has the stupidest name. Fangorn. 
and sequin r so you can hit install on those if you don't already have them you can also go here to install them sometimes that works better but all i need to do is turn them on so i'm going to hit library Ta-da! it's saying something there it doesn't matter okay and then i'm going to tell it to import the data so we've set the working directory we know it's right because it's right here. Technically, you can just click on this, but it, that seems really hard. So import working data. So what I did is I said white note. We're going to call the data white nose. It's DNA. Here's the file. It's in the format FASTA. If you, it was in the format FIML or FILIP or something else, then you would have to tell it something else here. And we know it worked over here because here we go. And we could even say, where am I typing it? Nope. Down here. Print white nose. And it'll print it. There's a bunch of stuff. It says all of the sequence, it has 11 sequences. All um, of them are 959 base pairs long. Here is some of them. Here is the A's, T's, C's, and G's, which is actually kind of good to know. Okay, so that's just the alignment. We need to turn that into something that the phylogenetic programs can use. So that's called a FIDAT file. So we're going to tell it the name of our alignment, what kind of um alignment it is this so this these choices are either dna rna or protein and then um ignore that level null situation okay and so here we are again here's all of our things there's some attributes about it we're doing it okay we didn't model test last time but we are going to this time so you use your fidat file Put it in the model test program. We're just going to call that model test data MT because we're not going to keep it for very long. So it's not a big deal. And it gave me this thing, but it doesn't matter. It tested how well our data fits into all of these different models. These are like the pretty standard models. And here are the observations. Do, 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 do. And they're kind of hard to read. Um, I just put this print here because I wanted to make sure that it worked. So now we want to look at our model. Oh, look at the model here. Oh, if I click, yeah, this is what I want. So if you click on this, the name of the file over here, it'll pop up in a bigger format here. So see, they just ran it in this order and then you're getting AIC and log likelihood scores. We're going to use the AIC score. You're going to click on it. <coughs> this is the lowest score, 2891. This is the highest score, 2901. Um, the log likelihood, log likelihood score is low, pretty low here too. I'm going to use F81 as a model. I also know that F81 is a fairly good model. Some of these models are like uh, not super reliable. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we want to go back to our thing. So here I have put F81 as our model. So now we're gonna make our distance matrix. And that works because something moved over here. Let's shrink that, shrink that. There it is, distance matrix. Now we're gonna just go straight to our likelihood tree. In order to make a likelihood tree, you actually have to do the math for a neighbor joining um, because you have to have a starting place. So that's what happened there. We can plot that. We don't have to, but that's what that is. So the, again, it's called white nose neighbor joining. It's using the distance matrix to plop it into the algorithm for neighbor joining. And here we are. And if you haven't already discovered this, if you hit zoom, it makes a prettier one. So it's saying these two are close, more closely related than they are to all of these. These are on the outside. Learning some things. Okay. Um, then 